Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to week 5 of Stocks and NFTs here on MQ, Movies, Money, and Marijuana. Before we start, always a short disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor nor do I claim to be one. Everything said here is for educational and entertainment purposes only. That being said, these are my opinions, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let's get straight to the point. The first thing in this video, Robin Hood. Robin Hood gets hit with a $70 million fine. This news dropped on the last day of June of 2021. Robin Hood is getting hit with the largest FINRA fine in history. So what happened? On the FINRA website, we can see that Robin Hood is to pay FINRA 57 million with 12.6 million of those 70 being used for restitution plus interest to the thousands of customers that were harmed. Oddly enough, if we go back to December of 2020, we can see on the SEC website that Robinhood was charged with similar fines as the one right now. The one back then, they had to pay a 65 million civil penalty and between 2015 and 2018, Robinhood Robinhood was giving out misinformation on its website in response to customers' questions about how Robinhood actually received payment. Since the whole attraction and rapid rise of fame for Robinhood is that it doesn't charge a trading commission. Instead, they get paid by what is known as order flow. Basically means that instead of routing our orders to stocks we actually want to buy to market makers, which are typically large investment firms or financial institutions that create liquidity in the market, basically they quote the buy and sell price and they give us the best prices possible when buying shares. But instead, Robinhood was routing our orders to market makers that didn't give us the best share prices because they were incentivized to do so by market makers such as Citadel, for example. Now back to this current fine, Robinhood is being fined by FINRA for one, customers who received false or misleading information from the firm. Thousands of customers the firm approved for options that weren't even appropriate for the customers to do so and millions of customers were affected by the firm's system outages back in March of 2020. First, FINRA found out that in their investigation during certain periods of time since September of 2016, the firm had been giving out misinformation on being able to trade on margin, how much cash was in their customers account, and how much buying power or negative buying power the customer had. They also didn't disclose the risk involved for specific investments such as margin or options trading. They weren't disclosed properly. Secondly, Robinhood began to offer options trading in December to customers in 2017. The firm failed to go over customers who were approved to trade stock options, despite the red flags suggesting that they were not suited for this type of high-risk trading. The FINRA report states that Robinhood used algorithms or option account approval bots that often approve customers to trade options based on inconsistent or illogical information which led Robinhood approving thousands of customers for options trading who did not satisfy the firm's own criteria. The third thing FINRA found is a little bit more complicated and it has to do with Robin Hood's relationship with the people they actually do business with. An example of this business would be accepting and executing customers' orders and in the last few years, because they haven't done such a great job at this, there has been many system failures that have cost people a lot of money. Probably the most famous ones of these failures was back in March of 2020, whenever the GameStop short squeeze was happening. Robin Hood essentially said that there were outages during this time period when people wanted to trade GME and other meme stocks. For that particular outage of March of last year, Robin Hood was required to pay $5 million in restitution. Robin Hood's whole response to this can be found in their blog, I'll link it down below, but in this article, meeting our responsibilities to our customers, 
they state that they have expanded customer support essentially they're hiring more people to allow you to talk to them and complain and they've enhanced in-app educational resources to give you a little bit more information to understand how these things work they've also strengthened the supervisory structure and in doing that they specifically mentioned the march outages from last year they're trying to make their system more resilient so that more outages won't happen like this ever again they're trying to improve their customer communication by giving you more accurate information and giving you disclosures about margin they've improved the supervision of options trading that they say that in september of 2020 their criteria for this option got a little bit tougher so it was harder to become an options trader and finally they've got their enhanced legal compliance for risk and fraud functions but anyways moving on to nfts gala games developer mirandas a free-to-play mmorpg that is still in development had their first stress test for mirandas last saturday on june 3rd here are some screenshots from the stress test posted on twitter by various users mirandas is a fantasy based rpg based on the ethereum blockchain that gives players full ownership of all in-game assets whether that be buildings lands avatar deeds and even weapons it's an ever-growing ecosystem that's been under development for almost two years now the game is set in a massive world ruled by five player monarchs who own the rights of five citadels as a player you can play under these monarchs or you can go on a quest to fight against monsters and dungeons alone you can own land deeds in this game to claim ownership of parts of the wilderness and build your own farms in cities on these land plots landowners can also lease parts of these plots of land to other players who can then place their own buildings on these plots when we check the mirandas marketplace you can see that most if not everything is sold out except for the highly supplied items recently opera the web browser and the developers for gala games announced a joint press release that i'll link in the comments down below a new building known as the grand sanctuary will be auctioned off on open sea july 12th with a hundred percent of these proceeds being donated to charity the grand sanctuary which there will only be eight of will help players get started even players who have spent nothing in in-game nfts in the sanctuary we will find the basics of survival including place for temporary rest and the resources necessary to begin being productive in this world the hope for the grand sanctuary is that it will empower new players and help close the divide between spenders and free-to-play players I highly recommend checking this project out I have high hopes for it and I can't wait to see how the world will look like in a couple of years but other than that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please stay tuned for next week's episode on Stocks and NFTs on the MCube channel.